Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna to take a look at a 25 and 0 team from Taffy Star, and I'm kind of excited to try it out because it's a triple buff team, and I kind of want to try out a similar team eventually as well with a little bit of different like twist towards it. But you're gonna see it most likely in a few weeks on my channel. But yeah, definitely check them out as well. I'm going to be linking them down below. They have a YouTube channel which I'm mostly gonna link down below a little bit more. Would be a little bit more fitting. But check them out. They also some content towards Pokemon Go. But let's take a look at the team here real quick. We're going to have in the lead the Wish Care. So Wish Care's having only a double weakness to grass type Pokemon. Going to be very good for us because the, like, the back down here is going to have two double resistances to grass type Pokemon, making it a very good core as they're going to already be able to win the first game. We want to take a look here at how this kind of went and what I could kind of change towards the team and on how I also play this kind of team here as well. But um, yeah, first off, we're going to have here the Seisop of the Skarmory having now access to the buffed Steel Wing is very cool for it. We're going to have the Tunnel Flame in the back, going to be able to sweep endgame with Flame Charge plus buffed Incinerate. But we're going to have in the lead, of course, our good friend the Wishcast, going to be able to beat those Bastions, those Steel type Pokemon in general that you definitely don't really want to face, especially with your um, yeah, Skarmory, but also not really here, for example, with your Talon Flame. But this team also struggles a little bit against some other Pokemon, as we can take another easy win here. For example, um, those Water and Growl type Pokemon are a little bit tricky. Like a Wishcast, yeah, I actually didn't even know that this would be the next Pokemon that we're going to encounter. But it's kind of funny to see here, um, Wishcast against us can be a little bit tricky. It really depends here if you're going to get the Scald debuff or not. That's going to help you out quite a bit, because your backline cannot really deal with it as nicely there at least because um, Steel Ring is resisted. If Steel Ring would not be resisted and we have like a flying type fast move on our Skarmory, this would be a little bit less of an issue but here luckily we were able to get two debuffs and we can just go for the full farm now now with the Skarmory against the opponents of Vigoroth. You're going to see the Aroxide coming through not going to do too much damage especially after the debuff and we can just go for the full farm down getting a ton of energy which will help us out later on as well and so we can realign our Pokemon. We have one shield less than the opponent but we can still go for a charge move and most likely going to get their shield back from them as this could have been of course the brave bird but we can still get to another charge move here they're forced to go for this gold and we should be in a very decent position here as we're going to be able to now align our talon flame against the whimsicott Moving on, let's take a look here at the next one. We're going to see as well, on the right side, you're going to see a different moveset on Skarmory. I haven't talked about it yet, and a lot of people are going to most likely complain about, oh, you made a mistake there. Yes, you're going to see, oh, look at this lag, by the way, I was only able to hit, like, a grade there, just barely because of the lag, which you also see, which was absolutely wild. But yes, you're going to see me mainly use um, the move Brave Bird on this Pokemon, on the Skarmory, especially in the beginning. But I would actually recommend you to swap over to Flash Cannon. The amount of times I got countered basically in the lead and then swapped out into my Skarmory and ended up against the Bastion was kind of insane. And actually with, with the Flash Cannon, you can sometimes flip the matchup against the Bastion. And so I would recommend you to just get rid of Brave Bird. Brave Bird is not really needed to be fair anyway, especially as you do a lot of damage to the false move already. And just going to go on and go for basically the Flash Cannon instead, which I feel like is going to be the better play to go for. And so that's what I would recommend to you. That's why it's on the right side. And you're going to still see some battles later on. I think as well with Flash Cannon. Don't think I ever used it, but I still think it's the better coverage move as a say swap. For the lead and for the Pokemon in the back, it might be better with Brave Bird though. Moving on to the next game. We're going to have here Wishcast against Garmory in the lead. This is going to be a fairly neutral lead, and you can stay in for a little bit for sure. You can go for a Scald, you're going to outspeed the opponent to the first charge move as you both need 50 energy and you're going to generate energy by one point per turn faster, which is kinda nice. We sadly swap out at the exact same time. I would have liked to go for a Scald first on well, like with my Wishcast, which would have been a little bit better. Now also I, I guess it's kinda nice here to go into the Skarmory over the Talonflame, because Talonflame would have this double weakness against the rock type coverage. But here you're going to see me not going for a shield, hoping that I can still survive a rock side, but they're actually going to go for the body slam, which is even better for us. But we should have went for the Brave Bird instead, most likely. I go for the Sky Attack, it's still enough to knock them out. But of course, the opponent would have not got as much farm here, but we actually can still get to another charge move with this, which is kind of nice for me as it's now going to be able to get them into a Scald range kind of. And you see me actually keeping my Skarmory here. Main reason for this is I have a shield advantage. I don't really care too much about my Whiskash right now because the opponent went into this Pokemon instead of whatever they have in the back and so it's very likely that they don't have a Skarmory or like a Bastion or like a Ka I mean Carbink would be a little bit tricky maybe. 
but you know what I mean. They mostly don't have a flying type answer in the back anymore. And so I decided to just go ahead and go into my talent flame. I think we already saw the entire team anyway, so I'm completely talking nonsense. And I can just go for the full farm and I can just go for the knockout against the opponents, which I uh, just literally talk nonsense there. So yeah, we knew already the entire team, so it was a fairly easy play to win this game. Again, next opponent, this is going to be a little bit of the trickier ones here for this team. We're going to have the Swampert against us. Shadow Swampert, going to get uh, to the moves at the exact same time as we do, but um, yeah, it depends on what you want to go for. You need to hit two mud bombs in order to knock them out. Maybe it would be better to go for a Scald. Um, Scald might allow you to resist, like, or like get the attack drop, which would be kind of cool for you as well. But it might put them into range for both of the Pokemon in the back for the fast moves of it. Because as you can see here, Mud Bomb is just not really doing it for you. And if you swap out into the Skarmory, sadly, against a Shadow Swampert, Skarmory is not going to be able to survive the fast move for long enough um, after two Hydro Cannons in order to still get to a move. So this is like a little bit awkward there. I think I still should have got an extra fast move in, which just got denied from lag against me, which is kind of awkward. But I can still go for a charge move against the opponent, knock them out now. But we're in such a bad spot now as the opponent is going to go into their Gas Lord. I can still go for a charge move here and going to put them into a fly range for our um, Talon Flame in the back, which is going to be nice. But as you can see here, the opponent is going to still have the upper hand as I have to let this move go through. I can let the yeah, Dragon Claw go through here. I have to hit basically a fly next, but I'm forced to use another shield now. And so the opponent can just swap out if they want to. It's going to be a Skarmory. And honestly, this game is even closer now than I expected it would be. Because as you can see here, I can go for the full farm down and so I have two flies stored. If I just would have been able to survive another Dragon Tail, I would have actually still been able to win this game. But sadly, I'm not able to and so we lose this game, but good game to the opponent. Let's take a look at the next opponent. We're going to have again the awkward matchup of Wishcast in the lead. And that's something which I also kind of feel like uh, maybe a different say swap would be a little bit better for this team, which is something that we're going to mostly like, take a look at eventually as well in this channel. But we, 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 I'm not going to talk more about this here. But yeah, we're going to have here the Wishcast matchup. Neither of us got the debuff and the opponent swaps out into the Polyrath. Interesting fun fact there. I think you're going to be able to outspeed them with the Talon Flame before they get to the charge move. At least I think so. I think they need eight fast moves to... Yeah, they need eight fast moves for the first gold. I think they need seven for the second one. So you're going to be always able to reach the fly before the opponent can go for any kind of charge move on their own. Of course, I assume I think they would have been able to reach before, but I assume it's like neutral, so it's not really the biggest deal. And like this, I'm going to be able to hopefully go for another charge move afterwards. They're going to go for the Scald. Not going to get the attack drop there, but they make a great play here by swapping out into the Wish Cast, allowing them to go for a Scald and now knock me out with that one. I can still try to go for my own Scald there. I tried to catch a Mud Bomb because I expected the opponent to go for that, but I actually caught a Scald and get the attack drop immediately. And with this, this game is kind of over. Like, I had to hope that I would be able to catch a Mud Bomb there. I was already pretty far behind just because of how the first matchup kind of went. So um, I kind of tried to play it a little bit risky, but we're kind of in a really tough spot here. As the opponent is going to swap out now into, let's see, the Polyrath again. I should be able to outspeed them hopefully, but they're going to swap out into their own Skarmory. If I went for the Brave Bird here instead, I wonder if I would have still had a chance of winning this game actually. Because as you're going to see here, I can go for one Scald, and I still should be able to reach the next Scald in time. And I think I would have been fine here still. Uh, maybe counter would have been a little bit too much, but I would have definitely knocked out them here. I think I might have been fine. It was definitely just if I went for the Brave, but I would have been most likely fine here in this matchup. But that's kind of sad. But let's move on to the next one. So you see already, this team has actually quite a lot of ways of winning and you can definitely win more than I did with this team. And here you see exactly the reason why I was like, hmm, I feel like that Flash Cannon might be a little bit better for this Pokemon or the Seisov spot. Um, you're going to see here the Sky Attack coming through, and as, again, for this reason, I have like the actual moveset on the right side. About Flash Cannon, I know I'm going to get a ton of comments again on the, in the comment section about, oh, you have the wrong moveset on the right side, you're not running Flash Cannon. I'm still going to run Flash Cannon at the end of those battles here as well. I would just recommend you to go for Flash Cannon on your Skarmory, just because there are so many Bastions around right now, which does make a lot of sense. Like, so many flying type Pokemon Bastion is still going to be good against Azumarill if they don't want Hydro Pump. But here we're going to still be able to go for a short move, and this Brave Bird is going to land onto the uh, Medicham, but the opponent decides to go for a Shield, which of course is a smart decision. I can let this move go through because the likelihood of them running Psychic is fairly low, and Psychic even then would not do as much damage anymore since the crazy nerf of minus 10, which is really good for the meta in general. I feel like just not really having a Medicham like meta line in general anymore, like Medicham is still there, but Medicham is not as strong anymore, which I feel like is really good for the meta in general. So I kind of like this one. 
Um, but here we're going to be able to just go for this gold against the opponent's shadow variant of the Alola Ninetales. And I can even go for a Mud Bomb in order to try to get the final shield from the opponent. And I will be able to get the final shield. And now I could actually just go for the two shield flex against them. But I decide not to do this because it's going to be a little bit safer play to just go for the Mud Bomb straight away. And I should have a great time here. This should be a good game as well. As the opponent swaps out into the Bastion, they're still going to go for a charge move. I can let this move go through if I want to. I do let this move go through and one insane raid is all it takes. And let's move on to the next game. Next game coming up, well, let's take a look what they're going to run here. We're going to see a Celio on the lead. That's kind of wild. I'm going to try to catch a Body Slam here, and we are going to be able to do exactly this onto our Skarmory. Going to resist this move, and so we're going to be able to get out the next Pokemon, going to be the Polyrath. This team, by the way, again, is an ABB-style line, so you have two Flying-type Pokemon in the back. You have um, uh, Water and Ground-type Pokemon in the lead, so you kind of want to um, swap out eventually to... Get out a potential Lantern, get out, I don't know, a potential Bastion, stuff like this. So again, also for this reason, for the Bastion, you kind of want to have Flash Cannon on the Skarmory in my opinion. But here we're going to be able to still go for just some Mud Bounce against the opponent's Polyrath. They're going to go for an Icy Wind. This is going to be fine for us as we can now retaliate with a Mud Bomb. And we're going to get them look low enough, most likely, for even our Talon Flame to farm them down. We still have a Shield Advantage and the opponent decides to swap out now into their Celio. I was not sure, should I go for the, the fly here or should I go for the flame charge? So I go for the flame charge here against the opponent. As you can see, this is going to get shielded, which is actually kind of nice because we're still going to get the attack buff. But as I can still go for another charge move, I decide to use my next shield as well and go, or like my first shield actually here as well, and go for another flame charge, which should knock them out from this range. And it does. So now we're going to have the buffed attack. And they're going to go for an ice wind, so they're going to drop my attack by one stage now, but we are still plus one. And they have a superior in the back. And we can say good to this Pokemon get boomed. Well, let's move on to the next game. We're going to encounter, you know, the opponent's Medicham in the lead. So Medicham coming back again and let's see, we're going to swap out and we're still going to not have the, um, yeah, <laughs> steel move. I think I still only had it for like one battle at the end, so that's most likely why. Um, but again, I would recommend you to just go for the Flash Cannon. I think this was the battle that actually made me decide, yeah, I kind of want to have Flash Cannon here because Flash Cannon would make a lot of sense in this scenario because nobody is really running it. Maybe making a video about this eventually as well um, for like the next time Greatly comes back or something like this because I feel like it would be an interesting topic to take a look at. Yeah, both of us going to wait out because I kind of want to get some energy with my wish cast against the opponent's carving. But I also kind of don't um, I want to give them too much health still, so they can swap out and still have some value out of this. So we're going to basically put them perfectly into farm non range, have a ton of energy stored now. We can go for the charge move against the opponent. Skull coming through, going at the attack drop, which does not really matter. And they're going to have a Dragon Nair in their bag, which is kind of awkward for us. But we can at least still go for the fly. Fly is going to be a very fast charging charge move. So like you're going to be able to get there very, very fast. So we only need one more incinerate to get to the next one. And this is going to knock out the opponent. But this game is not over yet, especially as the opponent should be able to farm me all the way down now. They can go for the full farm down with their fast move and I was not sure if the opponent is now in range for a scald from a normal um, yeah, wish cast. So I thought the safest play would be to just go for two mud bombs. And this is something that maybe comes with more experience but again here as you can see fairly certain that the scald would have been enough to knock them out from this range. But this was my own mistake and so they're going to be able to win this game. Good game there. But I think I could have won this game as well. So, again, this is something that I also said already in a video prior. It is always kind of important to take a look at your own gameplay and see why did you lose? Like, is there something that you could change in the way you play? And is there something like just getting hard while the entire time? Stuff like this is going to happen as well quite often. But it's not going to happen all the time. And a lot of losses here. Again, actually, I don't even have it on here yet. That's wild. I just checked back the video footage because I didn't want to tell you some lies or whatever, but actually like two battles ago I actually already had Flash Cannon on this Pokemon, so yeah, I just didn't realize it myself. But yeah, there is a battle in here with Flash Cannon, I don't think I used it yet, but again, as I said before, for those situations where you are going to go up against the Bastion, which happened to me quite often, Flash Cannon is just a better coverage move, and so I would recommend you to go for this as well. For me, Seisop Skarmory should have Flash Cannon in this current meta. And so we're going to still be able to go for a Brave Party against the opponent. They are going to let this move go through. And we can just swap out now into the Wish Cast as the opponent goes into their Polyrath. I can go for the Mud Bomb. Mud Bomb going to get the shield against them. I can go for another Mud Bomb. And you might think, why would you still go for another charge move here? There should be in fly range here, right? But I kind of want to get them into range where I can just go for a Flame Charge or even Incinerate and knock them out. But at this point, I can just go for another charge move here. 
And I will just have to hope that after the Bastion is kind of gone, like it's like she still exists in the back there, but it should only have a few HP left. We're going to be able to win here with our Talon Flame. They're going to go for the Icy Wind, which is a little bit annoying, but they're going to still have the Azuma on the back, so... Yeah, it's not really looking too good, especially with them having the Hydro Pump. I'm still going to try my best. I can still go for a fly here against the opponent. It's going to do some decent damage, but again, they're still having the Bastion lurking in the back with all the energy. And again, it would have saved us if we had the Flashkin on the Skarmory. So definitely try this team out, but with Flashkin on the Skarmory. That's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave a like, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.